This is one of my favorite things to do at any table where you've got a salt shaker. And you just pick up the salt shaker and you say, did you know that salt is magic and it can change the coin that you have in your hand to any color you like? So I've got a blue coin here. I'm going to set the salt shaker on top and just by you telling me what color you want, it will change. The salt shaker is a little bit bashful, so we're going to cover it up with a napkin so it won't get embarrassed while it's doing this magic trick. So right now, I want you to tell me what color would you like this to change to? And no matter what they say, it doesn't matter because we're going to change it to any color they choose. And the answer is one, two, three, it changes to red. Well, actually, it changed to nothing. I must have hit too hard because the salt shaker went right through the table. How do you do that? Very simple. To learn the secret to this and other magic tricks in this series, go to endorootcamp.com. Okay, today's tip comes directly from the root camp, and this tip concerns ways to improve your success rate with the dreaded inferior alveolar nerve block. 98% of the time, you can get a hot tooth completely numb. There was a study done in the Triple O Journal, and they found using one injection of 3% mepivacaine would only get complete anesthetic 25% of the time. That could be increased to 98% simply by adding intraosseous anesthesia. The X-Tip is a three-part device, and it goes in a slow-speed handpiece. There's a little needle cover here. There's a drill inside of a guide sleeve. And the way you use it, it's real simple. You put it in a 20,000 RPM one-to-one -one contra angle, and there are three steps. First step is you identify an injection site. I like to go distal to the tooth I'm going to be treating, although mesial would work as well. Then I apply topical down in the mucobuccal fold, just a few drops. I'll then give a little injection in that area because I want to not only numb the tissue where I'm going to drill, I want the patient to feel a little isolated area of numbness on their lip because if they don't feel any numbness, they don't believe that you have numbed the tooth. And then after a minute or so, I'll come back and take a pair of cotton pliers and push right in the area that I'm going to drill. When I remove the cotton pliers, there's a little dimple right where I'm going to drill. Then I'll put a couple of drops right there to numb the periosteum in that area. Step two is drilling through the bone. Use the handpiece, wide open, intermittent pressure. And you're going to go zit, 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 zit. When it drops through into the cancellous bone, take your foot off the rheostat, and at that point, you'll take a pair of cotton pliers, or your assistant will hold the pliers, steady the guide sleeve as you withdraw the drill from the area. Step three is the injection. Using the ultra short needle that comes in there, the 27 gauge needle, slip it into the little guide sleeve, slowly inject about a third to a, maybe a quarter of a cartridge for a single tooth. And you're, at that point, once you've injected into that area, you can immediately put down the syringe, pick up your handpiece, and start to work because that tooth is numb right now. So then we slide the needle in and inject. When we're done and we know that we don't need anesthetic anymore, we will withdraw the guide sleeve and dispose of it in the sharps container. Leave it in for the entire procedure until you're certain that you're not going to need any more anesthetic. The big advantage of that, of course, is if the patient start, if it starts wearing off, there's the guide sleeve. Just slip back in and add a little bit more. Injection sites. If you place the X-tip distal to the second bicuspid, you will get the first molar and both bicuspids numb with one injection. As a rule, you'll get both teeth numb on either side of the injection, and if you give a full cartridge, you'll usually get at least two teeth on either side of the injection site. If you go anterior and you go distal to the cuspid on both sides, you will get 10 teeth numb both on the lower and on the upper. Distal to the cuspid on the upper gets the central lateral cuspid and both bicuspids with one injection. Two injection gets 10 teeth. This is very handy if you're, let's say, going to do veneers or something where you don't want the lip numb, but you want the teeth numb. So they can still smile. You can see where the smile line is, see where the, the lip is going to be retracted, 
and yet have plenty of anesthetic in order to do your veneer preparations. Some benefits. You can use it to jumpstart your regular anesthetic. Let's say you're going to do a quadrant of inlays, onlays, whatever. You can go ahead and give your standard block and then come back and between the bicuspids give an intraosseous injection using the X-tip. The bicuspids will be numb instantly. And after that, you can start preparing those bicuspids. By the time those preps are done, the block will kick in and the molars are numb. So you can go ahead and finish the quadrant with no waiting. Instead of injecting and waiting uh, 10 to 15 minutes for anesthesia, you can inject, start right away, and you never have to leave the patient. Okay, before we finish up today, I would like to add two more pearls. Number one, it's perfectly okay to use articane, septicane, in this as an injection fluid, it's perfectly okay. You can inject the same amount that you would normally inject if you were infiltrating. The second thing is when you get ready to perforate the bone, place the X-tip, the guide sleeve and the drill are together, push it against the bone lightly, and then use a tapping motion on the rheostat. And it goes zit, 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 and you'll drop through the bone. Don't run it wide open and try to vary the, the pressure with your uh, handpiece. That doesn't work as well as just tapping the foot pedal. Anyway, try those out. I think you're going to love the X-tip. It works when all else fails. And you know what? I choose to not wait until all else fails. Well, that's it for another edition of the Root Tip of the Week. I'm Dr. Kit Weathers, and I will see you at the next Root Tip.